Easter is a representation that you can survive anything that tried to kill you. I don't know where you are in this place, but if you have come through some stuff, would you take one moment and give God thanksgiving? Come on, you sound like you ain't come through anything. You should have lost your mind. You should have gone crazy. But I'm still here. I need you to look at your neighbor and tell them you are a survivor. Bless the Lord. Today is not for the choir, it's not for the pastor, uh, but we give all the glory unto our God. We are the only religion in the world that can boast of a Savior who lived, who died, who rose again, and is coming back. I don't know how you feel about it, but I think we owe God some glory. Can you just take 10 seconds and open up your mouth? Come on, I said open up your mouth. Thank him that he saved you. Thank him that he fed you. Thank him that he protected you. Thank him that he kept your mind and kept your children and is keeping your future. Before you take your seats, I want you to hug somebody around you and tell them he must really love you. He must really, he must really love you. He must really love you. You are worth dying for. He must really love you. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. I want you to start a rumor. Would you just shout out loud, he really loves me. He really, amen. I want you to know not only does he love you, uh, but I want you to know that he absolutely loves new birth. I want you to give your attention to the screen so you can see how much he loves us. Join us on May 4th at 12 p.m. for a momentous occasion. The groundbreaking ceremony of our innovative mini home community, The Benison. I knew with over 250 acres, God got something else in mind. We have allocated 33 acres on our property, breaking ground on 150 mini houses right on our campus. Oh, come on, y'all ain't shouting right. Benison means blessing and goodwill. Only 42% of black people in America are homeowners. Uh, as a consequence, that means over 65% of the people in our community are paying rent. Witness the dawn of a new chapter in home ownership designed to bridge wealth disparities and empower the black community with an affordable entry into a prosperous future. These houses uh, will start at a hundred and fifty thousand dollars discover our meticulously crafted homes ranging from 650 to 1200 square feet offering style space and quality without compromise this event marks the beginning of creating generational wealth for families singles and retirees alike phase two of our housing development will be senior housing i need somebody Envision the future as we unveil plans for 75,000 square feet of dynamic retail space set to infuse the city of Stonecrest with a vibrant blend of shopping, dining, and essential services, amphitheaters, serene water features, and food truck havens, all designed to foster community and celebration. I hear the sound of homeowners in this room that believe I'm going to leave something to my children children that God is going to do something absolutely amazing. May 4th is not just about breaking ground. It's about laying the groundwork for dreams to flourish and pathways to success to be illuminated for all. Let's come together to celebrate this groundbreaking moment. Welcome to the future where dreams find a home and pathways to prosperity are paved for everyone. See you at the Benison. New birth, the dream is coming to pass. On our campus, we are building 150 houses. I need somebody to give God glory if you know our God is able to do it. 
I am uh, excited about the favor of God that uh, hovers over this place, and I don't know how you feel about it. I feel like he's going to do something special for somebody who's sitting on your row. I want you to just encourage and tell them something is in mind for you. Something is in mind for you. I don't know where you are in this room, but those of you who've been thinking about doing something different in your life, uh, you believe that God has more for you than where you are right now. I don't need you to turn to your neighbor. I need you to make it personal. Would you give God glory because you believe before this year is over? I better say it another way. I said before this year is over, God is going to do something outstanding in your life. Would you give God glory for what God is going to do for you? He's able to bless us uh, because uh, we are always mindful to be a blessing to others. God will never bless you as long as you're selfish. You didn't hear what I just said. God will never bless you as long as you're selfish. Uh, but when you keep being a blessing to other people, God will keep being a blessing to you. Uh, New Birth, I hope you are proud of the church that you are connected to. Uh, on yesterday, on yesterday, if y'all don't get excited, something is wrong with you. Yesterday, New Birth, right on our campus, we were able to give 3,000 families groceries on yesterday. Come on, y'all ought to shout about it. 3,000 families. They came on our parking lot as early as 5 in the morning uh, just to be able to receive uh, groceries. And I'm thankful that we were able to turn nobody away. Uh, that every person who came, we were able to give them groceries to feed their family for the next two weeks. Are you glad you're a part of that kind of ministry? I want to pause uh, because, yes, 3,000 came through the line, but 400 served. 400 volunteers were on the front line yesterday. If you were a volunteer yesterday, would you stand where you are? If you were a volunteer, come on, give God glory. This is what community looks like. This is what church is uh, supposed to look like. You may be seated uh, in the presence of the Lord. And so when it is that we give in this house, uh, we don't do it grudgingly or sparingly because uh, we know that we're connected to a ministry uh, where God can use us as a conduit, where God can use us to bless the community, bless the city, and even uh, bless the world. I want you to welcome uh, Brother Nathan Butler. He's going to tell you why it is that he is a tither at this church and how it is that it has blessed his life. Come on, give God some praise for Brother Nate. Come on, give God some glory. Anybody got your own testimony about what God can do? Let me say it another way. Has God blessed anybody at the last minute? Has God ever stopped something from happening that was supposed to happen? But his grace and his mercy. And as a consequence, you can't beat God's giving no matter how hard you try. I want to, all of us to get into the stream and into the flow of how it is that God is blessing, how it is that God is using. And as a consequence, we are a tithing church. Uh, we are a tithing church. We're a giving church because uh, we have seen God do some amazing things. If you're a living witness, would you just blink at me twice? If you're a living witness, uh, blink at me twice. I want all of us tithing on this day. Tithing is 10% of our income. I would give it back to God because it is a reasonable portion in reflection of how it is that God has blessed us. We've already talked to you about that 3,000 yesterday, 1 million in the pandemic, 150 houses that are getting ready to break ground right on our campus, and thousands of people accepting Jesus Christ as the Lord of their life. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I'm telling you, no matter where you go, you can't serve a God like our God. He'll be better to you than you can be to yourself. If you're absent of an envelope, would you lift up that hand, please? If you're absent of an envelope... You want to share, you want to sow, you want to give. <clears throat> if you want tomatoes, you got to use tomato seeds. 
Amen. If you want pumpkins, you need pumpkin seeds. If you want turnips, you need turnip seeds. How many of you need finances? You need resources. Amen. That's why it is that we call your offering a seed. That's why we call your offering a seed. I want you to lift up uh, that hand if you're absent of it. Uh, right behind your chair, you can scan the QR code. You can scan the QR code to take you right to our prompts of giving. Those of you who are worshiping with us online, uh, you're able to give, you're able to sow, able to share uh, through Zelle, through text to give, through Givelify. You're writing a check. I want you to write it out uh, to New Birth. Uh, if uh, you just balling out of control, you got cash on you. We'll take that. Amen. But we want every person to sow because uh, we're going to recycle the community and we're going to rehab the community and we're going to build the community about what it is that you sow and how it is that you give. I want you to make God your priority on today. Make God your priority today. Uh, you ought to give God more than what you paid for your nails. Because he took nails in his hands and nails in his feet. Y'all ain't saying nothing. You ought to give God more than what you paid for your hair. Hallelujah. Because he took a crown of thorns and they put it in his head. I want you to give God more than you paid for your clothes. Because they took his robe and they tore it apart. But aren't you glad? Clothes don't make you. Cars don't make you. Jewelry doesn't make you. What can separate me from the love of God? Absolutely nothing. If you make God a priority, God will always make you a priority. Please don't play God cheap. I need you to raise up your level of giving. I want you to raise up uh, your standard of giving. A low expectation is going to be met with a low demand. Uh, but I'm telling you, when you think high of God, God will eclipse your expectation. Dr. Dollar was here on Friday. He said, people who don't give don't believe God is good for it. But how many of you all know what you give to God, God will give it right back to you. But he won't give it to you the same way that you released it. I hope that you'll lift up your envelope above your head. If you're giving through your phone digitally, lift up that phone. If you're giving on your phone, I shouldn't see a picture of your kids or your dog. Amen. I, I should see a picture of Givelify, text to give. Amen. Zell. Every person is giving because every person in this room has been blessed. Every person in this room has been blessed. Amen. Those of you on the balcony, lift up that hand right where it is that you are. Ushers are on their way to you. I don't want you to feel left out. Amen. Bless the Lord. Uh, lift that hand up high right where it is that you are. Can you imagine everything connected to you is getting ready to elevate? Your credit score getting ready to elevate. Amen. Your savings is getting ready to elevate. Your lifestyle is getting ready to elevate. We want everything to go up but your blood pressure. Amen. Amen. Lift it right there. Repeat after me. Lord, thank you for what you did last year, for what you did last month, for what you did last week, for what you did yesterday. But the seed in my hand is an expectation for what you're going to do before this month is over. In Jesus' name. Amen. Bless the Lord. Our servant leaders, they're moving amongst you to receive your giving. I want 100% participation. I want everybody sowing, everybody sharing, everybody giving, as is the culture, the custom of our church. If you want to sow your seed for yourself, the altar is a open uh, for you to be able uh, to do it uh, so that you can have a uh, firsthand contact. But I want every person sowing. I want every person giving. I want every person sharing. And I want every person believing. Amen. Come with a smile on your face like nobody forced you to do it. Uh, like you just glad to do it. Like you just glad to do it. Come on, bless him. Bless the Lord. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. I am uh, so grateful to uh, have uh, all of you with me uh, on today, uh, but uh, I am over the moon excited. Uh, my daughter is visiting from FAMU uh, to be with me on uh, today. Come on. Y'all better give my daughter some love now. Amen. Uh, she is uh, finishing her uh, freshman year 
uh, in uh, journalism at uh, FAMU. And uh, I don't know what it is. I don't know what it is uh, that God's going to do today. But I've been praying this weekend. She's been staying with me, driving my car. My prayer life has gone to a whole nother level. Amen. I, I told the people Friday, I, uh, I never thought I'd become my dad. I fell asleep in the living room waiting for her to come home. Amen. But I am uh, just so grateful for her and so proud of the young woman that she's becoming. Uh, she's going to do some amazing things uh, in this life. Amazing things. She's got her mother's looks and her father's brain. But I am just grateful. Uh, I'm grateful. Let me ask if I can, if I can, if you're visiting, uh, well, let me do a couple of things. Dr. Sean McMillan from LA, won't you please stand? Won't you please stand? Stand up. Now, don't do that. Stand up. Sean McMillan is uh, the worst friend I got. He won't listen to nothing uh, that I've got to say. Uh, Stephen, would you please stand? Do better. Thank you. Stand. Stand up, Stephen. Thank you. Uh, Stephen is a vice president of Fox Television. Give God some praise. He's with us uh, on today. I call her uh, the Angela Davis of our generation. Help me thank God. My sister is here, Tamika Mallory. Won't you please stand? I'm so glad, so glad. Uh, I am appreciative. I don't know how many of you uh, know it, uh, but I went to uh, Duke University uh, after I graduated from Morehouse. I went to Duke University thinking I was going to become a lawyer. I thought I was going to become a lawyer, and uh, I didn't make it past real estate law. And uh, I heard God remind me of my seventh grade teacher that said, you always going to need math. I didn't believe her uh, until I got there. But uh, through the grace of God, uh, I'm thankful unto God. I was the very first, uh, very first uh, chaplain for uh, black lawyers in America. And uh, the president, the president of uh, the black lawyers uh, made me the chaplain knowing I was a law school dropout. Uh, and he's done amazing things. Judge Carlos, one you please stand. I'm glad to have you with us uh, on today. Amazing, amazing legal mind. If you are visiting, you're visiting from outside of the state of Georgia, visiting from outside of the state of Georgia. Would you wave your hand for me, please? You visiting from outside the state of Georgia. New birth, would you clap your hands for all of them? Bless the Lord. I am uh, so excited to have uh, my little brother Todd Delaney is just one of God's greatest gifts uh, to the body of Christ. He's going to lead us in worship uh, further. Give God some glory for him. Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter. Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter, if you'll uh, join me in verse number 12. Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter, verse number 12. Deuteronomy 28 and 12. The Lord will open the heavens the storehouse of his bounty to send rain on your land in season and he's going to bless everything you've been working on uh, y'all don't know when to shout huh? I said whatever you've been working on he's getting ready to bless it you will lend to many nations but you won't borrow from anybody. I want you to repeat after me. The Lord is about to open up heaven and send me more than enough. He's going to bless what I'm working on. I will lend to nations, but after today, I'm not going to borrow from anybody. If you believe it, shout amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. The Lord will open heavens 
the storehouse of his bounty to send rain on your land in season. He's going to bless whatever you've been working on. You will lend to many nations, but you'll never have to borrow. On this Resurrection Sunday, I want to preach using as a subject, let me hold something. Yeah, let me. <laughs> you can look at the person beside you, tell them, can I just hold something for a minute? I just... Let me hold some. A lot of us were raised as children in households where we were forbidden from using four letter words. We couldn't use it in our house or even in earshot of our house. However, it is not until we became adults that we were introduced to the nastiest four-letter word. The nastiest four-letter word is debt. The difference between those other four-letter words and that one is the other four-letter words demeans others. But this one, in many ways, is hard to pronounce because uh, in some measure, it projects what we feel about ourselves. Lindsay Bryan Potvin, in her book, The Financial Anxiety Solution, The Financial Anxiety Solution, purports that in our culture, we adopt the notion of debt as a character flaw. We see debt as a moral deficit. When truth be told, a lot of times it can be traced to circumstances that are beyond our control. 58% of debt collection in 2021, 58% of debt collection in 2021 was medical debt. Medical debt. And, uh, I dare not even begin to look at the ledger on the tax that comes with being black in America. It's incalculable. In terms of the difficulty of securing home loans, the absence of access to capital for entrepreneurship, the interest rate that is applied on trying to secure a used automobile, and the ungodly cost of student loans is all beyond our comprehension. I want to say to you today that debt is a sociopath because debt is the lead cause for divorce. Debt, you may not believe it, but I wanted you to know it, debt is the preeminent factor of domestic violence. While the uncaptured serial killer in our community is heart disease, the mascot is heart attacks. And the heart attacks invariably come from undue stress. And the stress is funneled out of debt. I came today to tell you, whatever you do, don't let debt decapitate you. As, um, as a consequence, I wanted to take a withdrawal from Deuteronomy 28, where Moses ekes out uh, the benefit package that comes from being obedient to the divine. The old church mothers used to say, it pays to serve Jesus. But I wanted you to know from Deuteronomy 28 what is in line and in store for you when you are obedient to God. Deuteronomy 28 verse number 3 says, you will be blessed in the city. And even when you leave the city, you're going to be blessed in the field. 
Deuteronomy 28 verse number four says, when you are faithful to God, not only are you going to be blessed in the city and blessed in the field, but your children will be blessed. When you are faithful to God, not only will your children be blessed, but you're going to be blessed coming in and you're going to be blessed when you walk out. Verse number seven says, when you are faithful and obedient to God, not only is that going to happen, but your enemies are going to be met with defeat. That didn't help you. Verse number eight says, the Lord is sending a blessing to your house. Even while you are in church right now, a blessing is getting ready to hit your house. All right, let me help you. In the balcony, on the floor, watching online, lift up that hand. I'm going to speak those blessings of Deuteronomy 28 over your life. I speak over every lifted hand that for the rest of the year, you will be blessed in the city and you're going to be blessed in the field. I speak over every lifted hand. Your children will be blessed. You will be blessed when you walk into a room and when you decide it's time for you to leave the room. Lift up that hand. I feel bad for all of your enemies because when they thought they were bothering you, they were picking a fight with God. I speak over every lifted hand that the Lord is sending a blessing to your address and every person who lives in your house is about to be blessed. If you receive it, I want you to just clap your hands right there. If you receive it. The crescendo, the crescendo of Deuteronomy 28 rests on verse number 12. The Lord is opening up heaven and he's going to bless the work of your hands. He says, you will lend and not borrow. Translation is, when you are obedient unto God, he is going to start putting you in position to be the lender. As a consequence, you are going to be the bank for your family. Hallelujah. I am Jamal's savings and loans. Uh, you you, you got to understand the position that God is about to put you in is not for you to buy bags and shoes and go on trips. Uh, but God wants to put you in a position so that when people in your family are in crisis, they ain't got to go to Wells Fargo or Truist or Chase. But you are going to be the one that they can depend on. Bishop Noel Jones said just a couple of weeks ago, he said, you've got to stop complaining about your position, about you always being upset because your family always asking you for money, always got their hand out, always needing something. You the one that got to put the family together. Uh, Bishop Jones said, ask yourself, which member of the family would you rather be? Would you be the, rather be the family member that's begging or would you rather be the family member that's blessing? And I feel like it's 500 of y'all that said, if I got to choose, let me be the family member that can be the blessing to the rest of the family. Philippians 2 and 8 says, and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to death. I would dare argue this morning without fear of contradiction that nobody was more obedient to Yahweh than, than Jesus. And yet in still, I don't understand uh, Deuteronomy 28 and 12 says that uh, I will be a lender and not a borrower. That's what he says. If I am obedient unto God, I will be a lender and not a borrower. And here Jesus is most obedient of all of humankind. And yet in the last week of his life, I find three hard inquiries for a loan. See if I can help you. In the last week of his life, I illegally pulled Jesus' credit report. And when I pulled Jesus' credit report, I found out in the last week of his life, he took out three loans. 
You don't believe it? Let me see if I can help you. The first, first loan he took out was last Sunday. Last Sunday was Palm Sunday. And he told the disciples, go into Jerusalem and borrow a donkey. Bring the donkey for me to ride on. I'm not going to keep it. I'm going to give it back. Uh, but I need to borrow it just so that I can get to my destination. I'm going to say this to somebody today. You can't borrow other people's drive. Hallelujah. You got to have your own drive. Because if you motivated, motivated by what other people do, you are never going to get to where you are supposed to be. You better get off Instagram, get off TikTok, because all of that got a filter anyway. You got to make up in your mind, when I get up in the morning, I do it because people are depending on me. I can't quit because I can't afford to break down. I got too many balls that's in the air. I need somebody in this room that folk don't understand why you can't quit, why you won't throw in the towel, why you won't wave the white flag. Do you not know if I sit down, I may cry. If I sit down, I may lose it. So I just got to keep going because I understand I can't go back to where I used to be. Some folk don't understand your drive because they ain't lived through the trauma you had to live through. But if you made up in your mind, I ain't never going to be broke like that again. I'm never going to be dependent on folk like that again. I'm never going to be depressed like that again. Why? Because I got to have my own drive. Got to have my own drive because I can't break down. Jesus rode into Jerusalem last Sunday on a donkey and then gave it back. I don't know what kind of faith you have today, um, but I'm going to go out on the ledge. I want you to just lift that right hand because I don't want you to get tired of me just yet. Lift that right hand. Do you know what I felt in the spirit today? And only those of y'all that holler back at me going to be able to receive it. What I receive in the spirit today is after reading Deuteronomy 28 and verse number 12 is that I'm a lender and not a borrower. I speak over lifted hands. I'm going to see how many of y'all are crazy enough to believe it. I speak cars with no car notes. Oh God, I can't hear nobody in here. I'm praying that God is going to get you out of vehicles that have a depreciating value. No exorbitant interest rates. No mechanical difficulty. You are going to escape out of bad contracts. You're going to get in it and you're going to get out of it. Those of you that are trusting God for transportation, would you give God glory for it right now if you trust in him? Um, he borrowed the ride then he gave it back um, the next thing he borrowed uh, next thing he borrowed was a large upper room he sent two of his disciples to find one big enough to celebrate the Passover says I need it here it is that it can house and hold 12 disciples Here's the catch. It was already fully furnished. I, I, I read a startling statistic that I wanted you to be mindful of, and the data is this. Hear this. Is that when rent goes up by just $100, when rent goes up by $100, it raises the probability of homelessness by 7%. God, I can't hear nobody. God, God is going to have to do something to give rent control uh, because some of you are paying at a price that is not commensurate to the value. Uh, but I believe for you that your gift, I'm going to take it literally, your gift is going to make a room for you that every place the sole of your feet shall tread upon, God is getting ready to give it to you. He told Adam, take dominion and take authority over the earth. If you are living in an apartment, you are borrowing somebody else's room. If you are renting and you are not owning, God is going to have to shift it because his name is on the line. Home ownership is in your future. 
I don't know why y'all are sitting still. But God says, I got to create generational wealth for your family. This is your last time on somebody else's lease agreement. I can't hear nobody in here. The spirit of Jabez is on you. He is about to enlarge your territory. Y'all can't shout about it. Let me see if I can talk to the people in the balcony. If God can give Puffy three houses, why can't he give me one? God got to be able to give it to you. Press down. Shake it together and running over. I see y'all got this thing twisted. I don't want you to shout like you at new birth. I want you to shout like you in your new living room. I want you to shout like the basement is finished. I need you to thank God like he remodeled the kitchen. You gotta give God glory. You may be seated. You may be seated. I'm you ain't never said it out loud, but you got to say it today. Somebody shout out loud, real estate is in my future. Hallelujah. I'm about to start flipping houses. God is going to give me houses I don't even have to live in. On the 15th, I'm going to collect rent from somebody else. I can't hear nobody. My father is rich in houses in land. It's time that you had your own. You may be seated. It's time you had your own. It's time your children had their own. It's time for you to be able to leave something for the next generation of your family. Somebody sitting there stuck up and look at him and say, do you hear him talking to your future? Hallelujah, you are a homeowner. You are a real estate developer. You don't even know that God is getting ready to unleash property that is due to your family. This nation owes you 40 acres and a mule. The least you can do is have one piece of property. He borrowed uh, in one week a donkey. And one week he borrowed an upper room it is Resurrection Sunday. And I thought this would be a good time for me to tell you that he also borrowed a tomb. Over 2,000 years ago, an innocent black man by the name of Jesus We have enough evidence. We got enough evidence that Jesus was black because they took him to court but never gave him an attorney. Y'all ain't saying nothing to me. Eh? We already know he was black because they arrested him and never set bail for him. Y'all ain't saying nothing. You, you already know that he was black because they didn't allow any visitation while it is that he was in custody. I got to stop right here. This ain't even in my sermon, but I feel like some of y'all in the balcony need to shout on this. God said, this is the season I'm getting the innocent black men out of jail. This is the season I am stopping the prison pipeline. I don't need you to shout if you got a perfect life, but I need you to shout for God to cover your son, for God to cover your nephew, for God to cover your brother. The gates of hell shall not prevail against him. You may be seated. You may be seated. I'm almost finished. Hallelujah. I'm almost finished. You may be seated. I need you to be seated. I only need right now for black men to stand up. Hallelujah. That's all I need right now is for black men to stand up. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There's getting ready to be a shout in this building. Sisters, clear your throat. We ain't shouting for money. We ain't shouting for houses. We ain't shouting for jobs. But sisters, I need you to shout for God to protect our black men. Come on, I can't hear nobody. Come on, I can't hear nobody. 
driving while black, shopping while black, living while black, walking while black. You ought to give God a praise for a head fence of protection. You may be seated. Hallelujah. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I feel something. This ain't even where I'm supposed to go. I promise to God, this ain't even where I'm supposed to go. If you a black mother in this room and you got a son that's incarcerated, I need you to stand. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, if you're a black mother in this room and you got a son that's incarcerated, I need you to stand right where it is that you are. Hallelujah. There's getting ready to be a shout in this building because God is going to get your son out ahead of schedule. He's getting ready to protect them. I can't hear nobody. And the gate, y'all are too stuck up for me. Y'all better shout for these praying mamas that God is getting ready to bring their sons out and they're not going to be wounded. They're not going to be traumatized. They're not going to be psychologically broken. But God is going to fight for them. You may be seated. Hallelujah. You may be seated. So they put an innocent black man in jail. And I know why you came. I know why you came. I'm mindful of uh, why you came and what you expected. And so let me, let me just give spoiler alert. And, um, let me just give you what you want real quick. Is, um, they hung him high. They stretched him wide. He hung his head. And then he died. Y'all, y'all really don't know church. But, but that's not how. God help me. The story ends. I need somebody to shout because this ain't the end of your story. I need somebody to give him glory because you are not finished with the journey that God's got you on. And hung him high, stretched him wide, hung his head. And then he died. Ladies and gentlemen, and here's uh, where I bring you to the nexus of my argument today is that a man by the name of Joseph comes and begs for his body comes and begs for his body. You don't even know, hallelujah, that God is getting ready to send somebody who's going to beg for your body. It's going to throw you off because they don't want to sleep with you. They want to take care of you. God, I can't hear nobody. God is sending somebody who will not rest as long as you are broken and you are bleeding, but they want to see you in the best shape of your life. Look at your neighbor, tell them I'm one of them friends. I, I don't want to see you depressed. I don't want to see you worried. I don't want to see you broken. I want to see you the way that God sees you. And that, that's why I'm giving God glory. Because you ain't even half of what you're getting ready to be. He begs for his body. You may be seated. And um, he says to Pilate, let me have his body and then I want you to see the language of the text. I want to put him in a borrowed tomb. It's Jesus' third loan. He already took a donkey. He already took an upper room. But now he's getting ready to go into a tomb that was supposed to be for Joseph. What great faith Joe must have had that he says, I'm borrowing the tomb. Here it is, because I know he's going to give it back. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, you got no idea what it is that people tried to bury you in. You are not going to stay in it. Hallelujah. I don't care what it is your mama projected on you. You are not going to be buried in that. I don't care what your ex said to try to break you. You are not going to be buried in it. I don't care what happened in your childhood. You are not going to be buried in it. 
And so I want to be clear that they took Jesus' body. And when they took Jesus' body, they wrapped him, here it is, in, um, in strips of linen because he's bleeding too bad. And there are a lot of you who don't even realize you're not buried yet, but you're bound. You're bound from everything that has happened in your life. And folk don't even understand it takes work for you to smile. It takes too much energy for me to laugh. I got to sit on the side of the bed and get myself together for a couple of minutes before I even head to the bathroom. How about God says, I see you're bound, but you ain't going to stay in that position. This is the same material they used on Jesus when he was born. They wrapped him in swaddling clothes. And some of you have been bound your whole life. And I want to be theologically in place and intact to tell you that when Jesus died, he died for sinners like Jamal Harrison Bryant. When he died, he died for sinners like the person who's sitting next to you. He who knew no sin took on the sin of the entire world. He looked beyond all of my faults and he saw me at my knees. Man looks at the outer appearance, but God looks at the heart. I want you to know that you serve a God who loves you so much that he died for you knowing you were going to mess up. He loved you so much he knew that you were going to be a repeat offender. He loved you so much knowing that you would never reach perfection, but he understood that his grace was going to be sufficient for all of us. And yet you sit in church and act like you are deservant of his grace and deservant of his mercy. But I need those of you who sing the song in your spirit. I don't know why Jesus loves me. I, I don't know why he cares. I don't know why he sacrificed in life. But I'm so glad. So glad that he did. And while he's bound... They put him in the tomb and he died for my sins and he died for yours. If he would have stayed dead, redemption would not have been possible. Salvation would not be offered and all of humanity would still be swinging in a timeless, tireless pendulum. But he said, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto me. But while Saturday night came and he's still bound in a borrowed tomb, Jesus quickened in his spirit and realized not only do I have to get up for you to be saved, but he said, if I remain dead, they will have to tear Deuteronomy 28 and 12 out of the Bible. Because if I stay in this tomb, I would never be able to pay Joseph back. God, I can't hear nobody. So part of why he had to get up is he said, I'm not going to go to death owing other people. I got to make sure that I'm able to pay it all back. I don't know where you are. My time is almost up. But I want to pronounce over you, you are not going to spend the rest of your life paying other people back. But God is getting ready to wipe the slate clean. You, you are getting ready to get a new lease on life. I'm going to say this to you. I'm appreciative for your time and for your attention. But I wanted to say something to you that burdened my heart. I want to uh, ask that you'll indulge me. I know you don't like it. I know you don't like it. I know you don't like it, but I need you to indulge me. Right where you're seated, would you take that neighbor by the hand? I know you don't like it. I know you don't like it. I meet you halfway. Take that hand, but you ain't got to turn to him. You get this? After money, do you know what is the most borrowed thing that is not given back? In America, do you know what is the most borrowed thing after money that is not returned? Tangible, tangible. Yeah. The most borrowed thing that is not returned 
Second to money, listen to me, is jumper cables. <laughs> you gonna get it in a minute? Your neighbor breaks down. Their battery is not working. So they come over to their neighbor's house and say, I need a jump. God, I can't hear nobody. They borrow the jumper cables. They get their car back up and running. And the problem is they forget to bring the cables back. Because all they wanted was power for themselves. And they don't care who else gets it. In order for jumper cables to work, you got to connect a positive to a negative. God, y'all are almost there. My, my positive connects to your negative and I turn my engine on. Everything that's in me will begin to transfer into you. Be, be, be seated. Y'all jumping ahead of me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So the person whose hand you holding is about to get a jump. God help me, this is gonna be their last season to press. I can't hear nobody, but all the oil that's in you is getting ready to flow into them. That they are not gonna suffer from a nervous breakdown. They are not gonna lose their mind. They are not gonna be swallowed by depression. But the glory of God is getting ready to go into your neighbor. If this has been a rough year for you, I need you to look at your neighbor and say, let me hold something. I need some of your power. I need some of your strength. I need some of the grace of God that's on you. And when I count to three, I want you to shout for the neighbor whose hand you're holding. Because power is getting ready to come into their life. The glory of God is getting ready to come into their life. One, two, three, shout! Hey, hey, come on. And after that, come on, I can't hear nobody. And after that, you shall receive power. All right. Listen. Hey. Be seated. Be seated. I'm coming. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hey. Hold on, musician. Let me walk by myself. Hallelujah. I feel glory coming now. I'm freed up. Thank you. Hey. Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy God. Hey. She can I, yeah, 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 yeah. Hey. See, you got to understand crucifixion and resurrection ain't about me. It's about somebody else that needs to be delivered. All right, I feel all right now. God said, when you shout in here today, the benefit is not for you. But every member of your household that's fighting through depression and fighting through mental illness, they get ready to get the breakthrough of their life. There's getting ready to be a scream in here because the devil thought he was going to kill them, but they get ready to get out of it. Look at your neighbor, tell him I need it to happen. We break every stronghold. We pull down every weight that the gates of hell shall not prevail. Uh, oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh, I can't hear nobody. You getting ready to come out of that cycle. You getting ready to come out of that rut. You coming out of that relationship. I need you to lay your hand on your belly and open up your mouth out loud like God is getting ready to break. Hey. Somebody.
somebody got to get delivered. Somebody got to get a breakthrough. I need you to lay your hand on your shoulder, on the shoulder of your neighbor, and tell them you ain't leaving here the same. Every chain is about to be broken. Every demon is about to be killed. Every issue is about to be resolved. I need you to shout for that neighbor like God is pulling them out. Like God! He says, I'm going away, but I leave you the Holy Ghost. God, I can't hear nobody. I'm going away, but in 50 days, you're going to have a visitation of the Holy Spirit. I need somebody to just pull it in the air and say, let me hold something. If you don't need no Holy Ghost power, then you ain't got to shout with us. But if you need the glory of God to rest on your life, open up your mouth and shout out loud. I need it. 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 Perfect. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lift up that hand. Lift up that hand right where you are. Hallelujah. Softly, let me hear strings. Hallelujah. If you would just get that word in your spirit that you ain't going to have to borrow nothing. That everything you need is getting ready to happen for you. All I have needed, his hand has provided. Great is his faithfulness. Morning by morning, new mercies I see. Great is his faithfulness. Lift that hand, I want to pray for you. I want to pray for you. Here it is. Morning by Come on, all. All I have has provided. Great is. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord. I pray for every lifted hand that God will put you in a position of strength where you'll not have to take out another loan. I pray that God will equip you. He'll equip somebody to bless you. That God will anoint your head with oil so that your family's cup will run over. I declare and decree that the struggles you've had, your children will never become intimate with. And those of you who by faith believe that God is able to do it, would you give God an uproarious sound of thanksgiving? Come on, I can't hear nobody. I said, give God. Sound of thanksgiving. I want every person standing, every person standing. Thank you. If you'll give me space right where you are. Every person standing, I gotta tell your story real quick. I gotta tell your story real quick. Um, when I was in the 11th grade, softly musicians, when I was in the 11th grade, I stole my dad's car. 
<laughs> Amen. Grace don't get any ideas. I stole my dad's car in the 11th grade. And uh, I didn't have a license. Didn't have a license. I didn't even have a permit. <laughs> I stole my dad's, uh, he had a BMW at the time, 745. I stole it. <laughs> and uh, I didn't know what I was doing. I went and picked up all my friends. They all in the car with me. We driving. And uh, if you've been in Baltimore, there's a whole lot of back alleys in Baltimore. I'm driving through one of those back alleys, and uh, I get a scrape on the side of the BMW. That's what all my friends said. Yes. <laughs> And uh, I, I wasn't sure whether I was more afraid because I stole the car or because uh, I got a scratch all the way across the side. I said, man, my father gonna kill me. This is terrible. So I try and get my friends to come home with me. <laughs> so they could explain. And uh, none of them would do it. None of them would do it. And so I'm driving around, trying to waste time, hoping Bishop done gone to sleep, that he, he don't even know that it's gone. I finally get home, balcony, y'all ain't gonna believe it. I finally get home, and my father's sitting outside. <laughs> sitting outside, and I'm, I'm seeing 17 years of my life flash before my eyes. So I think this is the end, this is, I'm Fred Sanford. This is the big one, Elizabeth. This is it. I'm coming home. He's sitting outside. I pull into the driveway. He comes down off the front porch. I said, Lord, I'm too old to get beat. This is, this is a mess. I get out of the car, and I want you all to see this. I want you to hear it. I want you to feel it as I felt it. And uh, <laughs> when I get out of the car, I'm, uh, I'm ducking because I just know he getting ready to swing. And uh, I get out of the car and watch this. And, uh, and uh, he does like this. I'm thinking he getting ready to clock me. And he embraces me. He hugs me. Listen to me. He hugs me and won't let me go. I'm thinking he's mad at me because of what I stole. I'm thinking he's upset because of the scratch that's on the car that he hadn't seen yet. And I had no idea he's embracing me because he's just glad I made it back safe. He didn't care about the car. He didn't care about the scratch. He was glad I was safe. And I want to tell somebody who was scared to come to the father's house, you didn't know because of what you had done, because of the scratches that have happened in your life, because none of your friends would go with you when you were in the roughest season. But here you are at your father's house, and the father wanted me to let you know, I don't care about what you did. I'm just glad you're here. I'm glad you're safe. I'm glad you made it. I'm glad you survived. And you being whole means more to me than what you drank or what you smoked or who you slept with or what you did. I'm just glad that you came to my house where I can restore you. Ladies and gentlemen, sons and daughters of the Most High God, I don't know where you're sitting. I don't know where you're standing. I don't know what you've done. I just want you to know the Father's glad that you're home. He wants to put you back together. He wants to restore you. He wants to cover up all of your blemishes. He wants to make you brand new. I'm going to do something, deacons, leaders, you don't have to move just yet. Give me just one moment. I don't know where you are in this balcony. I don't know where you are on the floor. I don't know where you are watching online. But the Father says, I want you to come home. You need to be in this church. You need to be in a place where you feel safe. 
You got to be somewhere where you will grow and where you'll blossom and you can become your best self. I don't know who came with you, but even if you got to walk by yourself, I'll meet you. All I know is you can't keep living the way you've been living. If you're in this room, listen to me. If you're in this place and you need a church home, you're in this place and you need a relationship with God, I need you to come and I want you to meet me at this altar. Don't let anybody stop you till you get right to this altar. I need you to come. Please, sir. Please, ma'am. Your life is on the line. Your soul is at stake. I need you to come. Listen to me softly. Listen to me. You can't borrow your grandmother's salvation. You can't borrow your mother's faith. You got to confess with your own mouth. You got to believe with your own heart. I need you to come. I need you to come. I need you to come. I woke up for this morning praying for you. I need you to come. Come on, I want your whole family to come. Bring your children, come on. Come on, I need you to come. If you're online and you're saying, I want to be a part virtually, you can join. You living in Kansas City, Connecticut, or Kentucky. You can live in Kennesaw. I still need you to be a part. New birth, clap your hands as they come. See what? Would you pull in just a little bit closer? Listen to me. A second wave is getting ready to come. I done done all that I can do, but now I need your help. Are y'all going to shout for these two young men that's coming? If y'all don't shout for this single mother coming, we're going to cover her. We're going to protect her children. We're going to give her what she needs to get on her feet. Come on, give God glory. Listen. This is what I need you to do. Please, sir. Please, ma'am. Help me open the doors of the church. Help me. I want you to help me. Listen to me. I want you, while you're yet standing, while you're yet standing, Jesus died for our sins. He died for our sins. And so I'm grateful he died for my sins. Listen to me. I'm glad he died for my sins because uh, five minutes ago, I lied to you. I lied to you five minutes ago. That's why he died, because I lied to you five minutes ago. Five minutes ago, I told you I wasn't going to have you turn to your neighbor. I was lying. God knows I was lying. Amen. I want you to turn to your neighbor and ask the person beside you, are they saved? Find out if they have a church home. Find out if they've given their life over to God. If there's one here who's not saved, not given their life over to God, hallelujah. I need you to come, sir. I need you to come. Y'all ain't talking to nobody. Ain't no way y'all gonna convince me the whole balcony saved. Ain't no way you gonna convince me of that. Ain't no way you gonna convince me all of them have a relationship with God. I need you to come give me your hand, but more than that, I need you to give God your heart. Those of you who are online on the lower thirds, you're going to be able uh, to partner uh, with us to do something significant and to do something striking. Come on, give God some praise. Come on, see what. Come to pass. Stretch your right hand to faith. Here comes another family. Clap for them real quick. That's his name. Stretch your right hand to faith. Stretch your right hand to faith. I want you to repeat after me. You're in the right place at the right time, joining the right church, serving the only God 
and I know that's right. If you know him right, would you give God some praise right there? We glad you rolling with us. We glad you in the family. You done made us the best church we could be. I need all of you, if you'll follow us this way, if you'll follow us this way, if you'll follow us this way. New birth, clap your hands for those who have come. New birth, would you be seated for just one moment? We're going home in just one moment. We're going home in just one moment. I wanted to share something with you just before I give the benediction. Uh, this week there was uh, a tragedy in my hometown of uh, Baltimore. Many of you uh, saw it uh, on the news. If you can help me, media ministry, very quickly. A uh, cargo a ship uh, bumped into the Francis Scott Key Bridge uh, in the middle of the night and uh, completely... Uh, utterly demolished it. Amen. And uh, I'm thankful unto God that God is a sustainer and a protector uh, that it didn't happen in the middle of rush hour. Come on, y'all ain't saying nothing. It didn't happen at nine o'clock in the morning. I want it to be a blessing and I want uh, you to help me. I want you to partner. I'm uh, jumping out uh, ahead of the pack because all that you're seeing uh, on the news is about the uh, rebuilding of that bridge. Uh, and how long the bridge is going to be closed. Uh, but the mayor, uh, Brandon Scott, said, you all are focusing on the bridge, and we got to remember that there are missing bodies. Amen. And I, I want to be a blessing uh, because this is uh, the spirit of our church and how it is that we function and how it is that we move uh, because I believe that uh, we serve that kind of uh, God uh, and he extends to us that level of grace. And here's the reality. If it happened to your family, uh, you would want, uh, you would want uh, the church to look out for you. Uh, we keep saying we're a local church making a global impact. We got to be able to do it. Uh, and so I know on Resurrection Sunday, uh, a lot of churches uh, focus uh, inward uh, and not outward, but I want to do something different, uh, and I hope you'll help me to do it. I, I want to uh, bless uh, the families of those who were lost on that bridge. I want to bless the families of those who were lost on that bridge, and each of those families, I want to give them $2,000 towards their funeral expenses uh, to be able to cover and to protect them. Amen. Uh, because I believe it's uh, right and uh, I believe that it's just. Uh, listen to me, even while the ushers are moving, uh, there are some of you, here it is, that can just write a check for 2000 You can do it. Uh, there are others of you that can write a check for 200 There are others of you saying, Pastor, straight up, my own family is in crisis. Uh, all I can give is 20 uh, But I think it would be a wonderful exercise of Christ-like compassion uh, that on Resurrection Sunday, I can uh, call the governor of Maryland and let him know uh, that there's a church in Stonecrest, Georgia that is operating on the real love of Christ and we wanted it to manifest on Resurrection Sunday. Uh, there are those of you that can give 500, others of you that can give 700, others of you can give 70, uh, but all of us ought to be giving uh, something. All of us ought to be giving uh, something. I always uh, lead by example, uh, and so I'm going to give a seed of $2,000 uh, on today uh, towards that first family, and I want uh, as many of you that possibly can, and those of you who are online, I need you to do it. Um, but I know that uh, God is going to bless us uh, in uh, that regard. Uh, if uh, you have it very quickly uh, so I can expedite the moment, uh, those of you that will help me be a blessing uh, to those uh, perished souls that were lost on the bridge in Baltimore, uh, would you bring your seed as quickly as you can? We're getting ready to go in just one moment. We're getting ready to go in just one moment. But those of you that will walk with me, partner with me, uh, I need you to help me uh, to do it as quickly as you can. You're doing it through your giving platforms. You're able to do it uh, what it is that you see on the screen. You're able to do that. You're able to do that. Some of you can meet and match uh, at uh, 2,000. I'm uh, thankful uh, for the dear sister uh, who came up to me. I done lost my notes, was in my jacket. Uh, her business, she uh, sold a seed today of $20,000 towards our ministry. Uh, and I am so, so grateful. I'm so appreciative, but let's be a blessing. Thank you, that's what I'm looking for. Thank you so very much. So I gotta put my glasses on. Amen. Amen. 
the Korg Management Group. Sister Vicki Evans, thank you so very much uh, for being a blessing to our church and being a blessing uh, to this ministry. Amen. I'm doing this, and I, I know my team is uh, doing backward somersaults because I was supposed to be doing uh, right now an infomercial about our Show Me a Sign campaign, uh, but I uh, just believe at my core when you make something happen for other people, God will make something happen for you. Uh, we're going to do that on the third Sunday in April. Uh, would you run that video even while they're coming to show me a sign? Help me, Vincent, if you'll do that for me. That would be a blessing. Come on, let's give lavishly. Let's be a blessing. First, and this sign is the last of what we used to be. A couple of months ago, a driver lost control, ran into this sign, and the LED wall became on the blitz. God gave me a vision, show me a sign. I wanna replace all of the signs that are on our campus so that they are exemplary of the spirit of excellence that our church represents and exudes. I can't do it without your help without your partnership or without your buy-in. It's time to enhance the beauty of the signs around the exterior of our campus for the first time in over two decades, reflecting our inner transformation. We invite you to join us in sowing seeds that beautify our church grounds and in return, seek God's direction in your life for the upcoming quarter. With giving tiers from $100 to $5,000, we ask that you pray for guidance on your contribution level. Let's unite on April 21st to raise raised $250,000, honoring the land entrusted to us by the Lord. Together as we give, we anticipate the signs and wonders God will reveal in our midst. Bless the Lord. Uh, so I, I want you to begin praying. You'll see on the screen for the third Sunday in April, we're going to redo all of the signs that flank around our campus. Uh, those of you on the third Sunday of April, over and above your tithes, will give a seat of 100, 500, 1,500, 2,500, or 5,000. Uh, but we want to make sure that our ministry uh, is exemplary of the five-star quality God uh, that we serve. I, I also want to stretch you. God gave me something the other day walking around my house. Uh, those of you at home that got jars of coins, raise your hand. You got jars of coins. Amen. Bring that to church the third Sunday. You... Ain't no arcades open no more. Amen. Uh, ain't no phone booths nowhere. Amen. Uh, so ask that you bring those jars of coins on the third, uh, the third Sunday of April. But I want you to uh, join us uh, in that level of uh, giving. I'm believing God for $250,000 above our tithes and offerings uh, so that we'll be able to do something substantial and significant. Uh, for this to take place. In God, there is absolutely no failure. Amen. Would you clap your hands for every person who gave today, for every person who sold on today? Bless the Lord. Uh, just a couple of things. Uh, for our children, y'all are going to be super excited. Our children, do not rush your children home after this. We're doing a helicopter egg drop outside uh, for all of our children. And so uh, we want uh, our children to take full advantage of it. Uh, now, listen, you know God is good that we having an egg drop when eggs is expensive. I mean, eggs is $5. Amen. Amen. So adults, don't you put them in your pocket. Let the children uh, have uh, the dyed eggs, but we want the children to take care of it. Uh, we want you to be mindful that we have not only opened a clinic, but we have opened a museum. Uh, and so the museum is open immediately after service. We want you to see our African textile museum. If by chance, if by chance this is your very first time ever visiting New Birth, would you stand if it's your first time, first time, Amen. Amen. Okay. Uh, so if it's your first time visiting New Birth, I got a special gift for you on today. Thank you. As a matter of fact, get your stuff. Amen. It's your first time here. Would you come meet me at the altar? Get your bag. Get your coat. Get your bonnet. Come on. Get your keys. If it's your first time, come meet me at the altar. It's your first time coming to New Birth. It's your first time. I need you coming. 
Even if it's your first time, you've been coming online. Come on, Morehouse man. Good to see you. Bless you, sir. Amen. It's your first time. First time. First time. Amen. New Burford, you're going to clap your hands for our first time. Look at this. Oh, man. Hey. Thank you. You are a man of your word. Thank you. Amen. Every person is coming. Every person is coming. Every person is coming. Amen. Every person is coming. Look at these first time visitors. I found a statistic that I wanted uh, you to be mindful of. Listen, 85% of people who don't go to church, 85% of people who don't go to church said they would go if somebody invited them. 85% of people who don't go to church said they would go if somebody would invite them. Do you all know only 2% of church people invite other people? I want you to be, I want you to be intentional to invite uh, people to uh, come to church. Raise your hand. Raise your hand. I, right, come on, raise it high. That's my guy. Amen. I, I, I just met him two days ago in the dry cleaner and told him to come to church, and he done came to church. Yeah. Now, if, if the pastor can invite folk to church, then I need you all to please make sure that you invite uh, people to church. The members will tell y'all, I don't give stuff away. I'm telling you, I'm, I'm tight, tight. I don't give stuff away. But because you came today and you had 2,000 other churches you could have went through in Atlanta, uh, I wanted to give you a special gift uh, from me. So if you will follow, you see she has that sign that said, if you're from Chicago, you know them words, follow me. Amen. I need you to please follow her. Y'all don't know house music. All right. I ask that y'all please will follow her right out this door. New birth, would you clap your hands? Clap your hands. I'm starting a, uh, on Tuesday, uh, we have, uh, we have uh, enlarged, increased, enhanced, and improved our NPR studio with over $1 million worth of equipment, over $1 million worth of equipment. Tuesday night, we are doing a dedication service for our studio. Tuesday night, it is a state-of-the-art television studio right on our campus. I want you to come on the Tuesday night at 7.30. I'm going to preach. The choir's going to sing, uh, and we're going to give God the glory. But I want you to see what God has done and what your tithe has paid for. Amen? Uh, so that you don't have to have the end. Of this is a whole lot of visitors. I hope y'all come back. I hope y'all will come back. It'll make my heart feel good if you come back. Amen. Let's all oh, nope. Thank you. I love y'all. Thank you so very much. Would you stand to your feet if you'll stand to your feet? Amen. Grace, come on. Walk with me. Amen. God bless. It's a whole lot of y'all. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we got. He wanted to know before I go back there, you got enough gifts for all of us? Oh, it's my pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, Grace brought her best friend with her from uh, FAMU Jazz. Thank you. Glad to have you with us. Amen. So I got to feed both of them. Thank you. Amen. All right. Everybody is standing. Come on. Let's go down this way. Come on. Thank you. Amen. Everybody is standing. Everybody is standing. Repeat after me. Walk with God. And he'll walk with me. Talk with God and he'll talk with me. Listen to God, and he'll listen to me. Love God, because he first loved me. Amen. Lift that hand as high as you see. Hey, how you doing? Lift that hand as high as you see yourself going. Amen. Lift that. Y'all got lifted higher than that. I forgot to make an announcement. Lift that hand. I forgot to make an announcement. Y'all ain't gonna believe it. We got church next Sunday. Amen. So make sure uh, that you are present. Grace, meet your foster sister. Amen. You look good. Yeah, you sent her with her uncle last week. Oh, you were ushering. Yeah, I don't like when she with the uncle. She don't treat me right. Amen. 
lift that hand as high as you can. Amen. Now unto him who is absolutely able to do anything but fail. You look good, woo. Look at you. Now to him who's able to do anything but fail, may God make you sleepless until you help somebody. May God make you restless until you help yourself. May God irritate you until you have enough sense to worship him. And may God bless you until you have to give stuff away. Henceforth now and forevermore, and the blessed people of God said, amen. God bless you. The egg drop is right outside, and we have photo booths in the lobby. Have an incredible Resurrection Sunday.